Welcome back to week two of our unit on the film Edward Scissorhands Year 7s. I'm super, super excited about the work that we've got planned this week for you guys. You're going to be doing a range of active, creative and fun tasks. So I hope you enjoy this week's content. Now, today's video lesson is going to be comprised of two parts. Part number one is this very video lesson that you're watching right now. And part number two is this guided worksheet. So your teacher's going to tell you how to download this worksheet, so make sure you listen to them carefully and make sure you're reading the lesson plan on Compass carefully as well. Now, at certain stages of this video lesson, I'm going to direct you to pause the video and have a go at completing some of the activities in this worksheet. Therefore, it's important that you have both the video lesson playing, so the video playing, as well as the guided worksheet open on your device. Now you're going to be given two periods to work your way through the video lesson as well as the guided worksheet. Because you're going to be given a double period, it is really important that you take your time to finish off the work and give quality detailed responses to these questions instead of trying to rush your way through these activities and trying to finish early. We're looking for quality responses, so take your time and don't be afraid to slow down and ask questions of your teacher if you need clarification. So I'm really excited because today we're going to be delving into the world of the text Edward Scissorhands. We will explore the social, historical and political context that inspired aspects of the film. Now specifically we're going to go back in time and explore America in the 1950s and how this period of history influenced the making of Edward Scissorhands. We're going to learn a little bit about the history and politics of 1950s America and we're also going to explore the music, the pop culture, the fashion that was popular in the 50s. So without further ado, let's travel all the way back in time to America in the 19th. So Year 7s, we're going to begin today with an overview or a snapshot of what America was like in the 1950s. So it's a really exciting time to be an American. You've got the emergence of rock and roll music, and it's led by that young man in the image on the far right, and his name is Elvis Presley. You might have heard of him. He's often referred to as the king of rock and roll. It's also a very important time for the African American community, because the civil rights movement really gained steam during the 1950s. This was a movement where African Americans, who had been enslaved for centuries, who had been um, discriminated against through the Jim Crow laws, this is a time where they begin campaigning and protesting for equal rights and equal treatment. The 1950s in America is also an exciting time because the economy is booming. The decline of commodity prices, as you may read on your screen right now, so that means um, that goods, services, products are sort of decreasing in price, that allows for the expansion of the middle class. So families are now earning more money than they've ever earned before, which means they have more money to spend and they can buy newer and finer goods, like fridges, TVs, um, dishwashers, all these different core appliances. So the 1950s is a wonderful time for the economy in America. Unemployment is really low and the middle class is booming. With that boom also comes the development of suburbia. So most of us would live in the suburbs, so the land on the outskirts of the city. So in the 1950s, different developers buy land on the outskirts near the city and they build relatively cheap houses there. And thus this creates the suburbs boom. More and more people, more and more young American families in particular, move to houses in the suburbs because they have backyards, open floor plans, living rooms, um, gardens, which are really good for their kids. Several laws also made it cheaper for war veterans who have just come back from World War II, which ended in the 40s, to buy houses in the suburbs. So it's actually much cheaper 
to buy a house in the suburbs than to it to buy a house or rent an apartment in the city. So you have this boom in housing in the suburbs. Now, the 1950s was a great time for America because you've got a booming economy, um, a really affordable um, suburb, suburb kind of lifestyle, I should say. But it also brought along some negatives. For example, conformity was heavily encouraged in the 1950s. When men returned for the, from war, they pushed women in the workforce out and back into their homes. So you have to remember and have to consider when the men went to war, a lot of women took over their jobs. But when they came back from World War II, they kicked the women out and the women were confined back to their homes. So traditional gender roles were re-established. Women essentially were told that their only job was to raise kids and do their housework and stay at home. Whereas men, their primary job was to be the breadwinner. So they would get a job, earn money to support their family. So in the 1950s, as much as it is a really positive and exciting time to be an American, you also have these really stifling sexist gender roles. And that, unfortunately, breeds this culture of conformity where everyone has to conform or stick to the same role. And that really stifles and limits the freedoms of many people, especially women. So, now what I'm going to get you guys to do, in a second I'd like you guys to pause the video and then go to your guided worksheet and complete these three tasks for me. Now I want you to spend approximately 25 minutes completing these tasks. So task number one, I want you to, in your own word, define the term conformity. Task number two, I want you to hover your cursor over this link and open this article about the dark side of suburbia. So why the suburbs boom may not have been as great as it seemed. And I want you to read this article and describe two negative effects of the suburbs boom. Last but not least, task number three, I want you to consider the pair of stills. So think of these as screenshots. So if you pause the movie Edward Scissorhands and took a screenshot, this is what it'd be. So I want you to consider these pair of stills that depict the film's suburban setting. And I want you to describe firstly what you see in these stills. So perhaps you may also want to comment on the color of these houses, the lighting. Um, Think about what you can actually observe with your eyes through these two, uh, on these two stills, or in these two stills, I should say. And then I want you to consider how was the idea of conformity conveyed or illustrated through these two stills? Okie dokie. So I'm going to ask you guys to pause the video now and have a go at these three tasks. So yes, Evans, let's explore what music and popular culture was like during the 1950s in America. So, it's an awesome time to be alive if you love music, you love movies, and you love your TV. So, popular music genres at the time include rock and roll, pop, country, and R&B. Possibly the most famous musician of the 1950s in America was Elvis Presley, who's also known as The King. You've also got iconic names like Frank Sinatra and Doris Day um, really growing in popularity during the 50s. Now, the 1950s is really focused on rock and roll music. So the songs center on the rock and roll lifestyle. They're these raw, powerful, compelling songs about love, sorrow and relatable life experiences that draw audiences and fans of all ages in. So no doubt, the music industry is booming during the 1950s. Driving theatres are also really popular in the 50s. You've got over 4,000 driving theatres across the USA alone. Um, just like many others across the country, Mel's Driving is a really popular franchise and it offers all types of luxuries for parents of infants, such as bottle warmers and diaper vending machines. 
So if you're a couple with children, you can bring your children along to the drive-in movies, um, drive-in theatre, I should say, and they'll take care of them, no stress. No need for a nanny at all. You can also um, play a game of miniature golf after you finish watching your film. The 1950s, in summary, is a really awesome time if you're a fan of music, pop culture, movies, TV. So what I'm going to get you guys to do now is head back over to the guided worksheet and have a go at the task under topic two. So using YouTube, Spotify, or a platform of your choice, I want you to find and listen to a song from the 1950s. You may like to explore the music of the artists that I've listed below, and I've also categorized them into specific genres. So you're more than welcome to check out some of the music of those artists. So your job is to simply find a song and listen to it, and then afterwards write the name of the musician as well as the title of their song um, below here. Simple activity, but hopefully you'll have a little bit of fun with it. All right, see you guys soon. I'm gonna ask you guys to pause the video now to do activity two. Welcome back, Year 7s. So let's have a look now at fashion during the 1950s. All right, ladies, it's the era of the nipped in waist and full skirted silhouette. So if you're a woman in the 1950s, fashion is all about femininity and formality. So Mr. Christian Dior, really high end fashion brand, has recently revealed his newest creation the strapless bodice. So, oftentimes ladies would pair that with a form-fitting skirt or the more popular poodle skirt to define their waists. It's really important in the 1950s if you're a lady to make sure you're perfectly turned out. So you wanna apply some non-smear lipstick and have some really groovy accessories on. And you can refer to that photo on the screen right now to give you an idea of what women dress like in the 50s. Now, gentlemen, you wanna quiff those locks. You wanna sort of have that lots of volume in your hair. So whilst um, women's wear prides this idea of formality, men's wear doesn't. So in the 50s, if you're a man, there's this new fond, uh, newfound trend, I should say, called the working class look. So a lot of men in the 50s, when they were dressing casually, would throw on a pair of jeans, a white t-shirt and a leather jacket. Sometimes you had this really preppy look as well, so men would put on cardigans. Now, when you would go to more formal occasions, so evening wear attire, men would still wear suits that had a bit more of a baggy shape and they would pair it with a slim tie. The 50s is important for men's fashion because there's lots of colour and we could say the same about women's fashion in the 50s as well. So you had lots of colourful pastel colours in the 50s and if you're a man especially you would style your suit and tie with a stylish hat, a hanky and some wingtip shoes. So your third activity today on the guided worksheet is under topic three titled fashion and I want you to spend about five minutes to do this activity so a real quick one so you may refer to these two pictures of fashion in the 1950s in America or you could even just search it on Google and see what people used to wear at the time and then I want you to write a short response to the question what are some similarities and differences between 1950s fashion and modern fashion for example, how we dress ourselves today in the year 2020. So, I'm going to ask you guys to pause the video and have a go at this activity. Alright, Year 7, so moving on to the history and politics of 1950s America. So even though World War II ended a few years ago, political tensions continue to run high between the US and the Soviet Union during the 50s. So, American leaders and the West in general start to worry a little bit in the 50s about the Soviet Union, which is led by the dictator Joseph Stalin, as the Soviet Union begins to take more and more control over countries and regions in Europe. 
the Soviet Union also strengthens their military and um, get access and begin developing a nuclear weapon, which really scares the US. The Soviets also launched the first man-made satellite to orbit Earth called Sputnik 1. And the American public are shocked because they're like, how did the Soviets beat us to developing this technology? In response, the President of the United States at the time, um, Dwight Eisenhower, establishes NASA. So a few of you guys may have heard of NASA. Um, it's the American Space Administration Department. On a deeper level, though, there's this sort of fear that's creeping into American society because they're really scared that the Soviets, who um, are governed under this communist ideology, are overtaking and infiltrating the American um, society. So American leaders and the government begins to fear that there are Soviet spies um, in the ranks and um, infiltrating American society and they're stealing American secrets and passing them back over to the leaders in the Soviet Union. So what does the government do? They want to put an end to this and essentially weed out anyone they think is a Soviet spy or a communist. This leads to the development of a culture of paranoia, of fear. And a lot of people are accused and trialed for being traitors to America, for, uh, um, trialed for being spies for the Soviet Union. And unfortunately, this, this leads to a lot of individuals losing their jobs, losing their families, losing their livelihood. We now know that the majority of the people who were accused and convicted of being traitors to America were actually innocent people. But because the American government, the leaders and the American people in general were so scared that the Soviets were these um, insidious evil outsiders infiltrating American life, because they were so scared of this, um, this led to hysteria and paranoia, and unfortunately, a lot of innocent people were convicted and persecuted. So, I want you guys to now spend approximately 25 to 30 minutes having a go at topic four. So, it's important that we link what we've learned about American history and politics during the 1950s to the film Edward Scissorhands. In the 1950s in America, they have this um, fear and paranoia that the Soviets are infiltrating American life. You've got these clandestine, secret Soviet spies, these outsiders infiltrating American society and stealing their secrets and causing chaos. So this led to the culture of paranoia and a fear of anyone who was considered an outsider. And this is a similar theme explored in the movie we're analysing this term, Edward Scissorhands. Because Edward, throughout much of the film, is also considered an outsider. So your task is to write a short paragraph explaining how and why Edward is considered an outsider throughout the film. You can use these following questions or prompts to guide your thinking. And I've also given you guys some sentence starters to uh, make your life a little bit easier. You don't have to use these sentence starters, but if you just want a little bit of a head start, you can definitely refer to them. So, just reiterating, your job is to write a short paragraph using these prompts and sentence starters if you wish, explaining how and why Edward is considered an outsider throughout the film. So I'm going to ask you guys to pause the video lesson now and spend 25 to 30 minutes having a crack at this activity. Good luck. Okie dokie, seven. So we have finally gotten to the final topic for today's video lesson. And that is on the common jobs um, that men and women did in the 1950s. So the good news for you guys at least is there's no activity or task 
that corresponds to this section of the video lesson on your guided worksheet. So you can sit back, relax, and simply listen to this part of the lesson. So if you're a lady, oftentimes you would work as an airline stewardess. And think back to the jobs that the woman did in Edward Scissorhands. You've got Peg, for example, who works as a saleswoman for Avon, which was a really big cosmetics brand back in the 50s. So Peg in the movie and a lot of women would um, essentially door knock, knock on the doors of the people in their suburb, in their neighborhood, and try to sell them cosmetics. If you're a man, oftentimes you worked as an advertising accountant, and there were also more and more mechanics in the 1950s. Because of the suburbs boom, um, a lot of people needed to travel into the city to do work. Um, in order to do that, you oftentimes would need a car. So more and more mechanics, and most of them were men, um, were needed during the 1950s. Now it's important to emphasize that um, most women were actually encouraged to stay home, as we learned earlier in today's video lesson. Um, so there was this sort of sexist um, view that women just stayed home, did the housework, look after the kids, and essentially were housewives. So even though we've talked about today a little bit about um, the different types of jobs that women did in the 50s, we have to um, recognize that this was very rare. Most women were asked to stay at home. And because the economic boom um, and really stifling gender roles and the suburbs boom um, actually stifled, so it limited the freedom of women. The 1950s sort of um, was the time where the feminist movement started gaining a bit more steam as well. And the feminist movement really took off in the 1960s, so in the next decade. So it's really important that we um, understand how the economic boom, the suburban boom, actually stifled and limited the freedom of a lot of women in the United States in the 1950s. Amazing work, Year 7s. Well done for making it to the very end of this video lesson. What I'd like you to do now is to sort of check your understanding and review what you've learned by doing an activity I call the 3 2 one. So I want you to write on your worksheet what are three things that you learnt from this video lesson? Could be about anything. What are two questions that you still have about the content that you've learned? And what's one aspect of this video lesson that you really enjoyed? So once you finish your 321, make sure you submit your worksheet to the learning task on Compass titled Semester 2 Dev Task World of the Text Guided Worksheet. All right amazing work today year sevens i hope you enjoyed the video lesson and i hope you've learned a little bit about 1950s america and i hope you are starting to see now some of the parallels between 1950s america and the world of the film edward scissorhands